G'day guys. I recently got my Nintendo 64 controller working in Arc OS on my R36S, so I thought I would share my notes. This isn't intended to be an ultimate guide, instead, just how I got it working and what I've learned along the way. As always, I'll be using a fresh install of the latest version of Arc OS, and we'll also be using an official Nintendo 64 controller. It does have the correct end. I'll be connecting it through this cheap Nintendo 64 USB adapter I picked up from eBay many years ago. And as always, we'll be using my cheap USB-C to USB-A adapter. I'll just plug the 64 controller into my adapter, and we've plugged the adapter into my OTG port on the R36S. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is make sure our USB controller was detected in ArcOS. To do that, let's go over to Options, go into Advanced, and go down to Controller Tester. Hopefully it does find your connected controller. For me, it says Joystick Currently Connected 3. That's the built-in one and the two ports on my USB N64 controller adapter. I'll just press some buttons, and you can see it does uh, detect it on the screen. So that does work, which is good. To exit out, it should be select and start together. Now we know our controller is detected, we want to configure it in RetroArch. Just going to load up an N64 game. We'll go Mario 64 just to get started. Before we open the RetroArch menu, I do like to enable fast forward, so the fast forward icon doesn't get in the way. So from there, it's going to press FN and X to open up the RetroArch menu. Press B to go back to the main menu. Go down to settings. Go down to input. Go down to maximum users. We want to change that to two. So just press right. We want to go up to RetroPad binds, which is the very first option. Go to port two controls. Go down to device index. And we just want to make sure our USB controller is selected. So you can see here, there's two ports that show up since there are two sockets on my USB adapter. I'll leave it as port 2, and we'll press A. From here, we want to go back to the main menu, so just press B a whole bunch. Open up quick menu, go down to controls, go down to port 2 controls, go down to mapped port, and change that to port 1. In the previous step, we did select our USB gamepad to be port 2, and this configures it as player 1 in the N64 emulator. From here, you can go down and make sure all your mapping's correct. Pretty much everything's correct for me, except A and B. So I'm going to open up B, change that to B button, Go down to A, change that to A button, and then I'll close the RetroArch menu and we'll just test that it worked. So the start button works. The joystick does work, which is good. Now we're finally in the game, I'll turn fast forward off, and we'll actually make sure all the buttons are mapped correctly. So joystick works fine, Z for crouching, A and B work, R does uh, change the view, C up does as well, C down, C left, C right all work. everything does work. Once we're happy with the settings, we'll open up RetroArch menu once more. But first, I will turn fast forward on. We want to go all the way back to the main menu. So press B a whole bunch, go down to configuration file, and go down to save current configuration. That's all there is to it. Since we aren't changing the mapping of the built-in gamepad, and instead having both the USB controller and the built-in gamepad as player one, you can seamlessly switch between either built-in or USB without going back into the menus once more. If you unplug the USB gamepad now, you would just play it as you would normally. I'm not too sure how convenient this actually is since the R36S doesn't have a TV out option, but you could potentially 3D print an adapter that plugs into the cart slot that holds the R36S, essentially turning it into a portable N64 console. Also, you can use this method to play two player games with two separate controllers, and with this adapter in particular, since it does have two ports, you would just enable three ports on the main page and then set port two as player one as we did, but also port 3 as player 2. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.